What is up creators, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to my channel, I'm Tony Fuentes. Today, we're returning to the edit like series where we break down the styles of famous photographers, YouTubers, or creators, and try to replicate their color grading in post edition to learn how to color grade. Now, the style that we're gonna replicate today is Tina Sosna. Now, this flat, desaturated, and analog style was suggested by some of you guys in a previous video, so if you have any other suggestions, put it down in the comment section and I'll check them out. First of all, we're going to jump into Instagram, just check out some examples of the color green that we need to achieve. And then we jump into Lightroom, edit a photo, create a preset out of it and see how it performs. So let's jump into it. So creators, here we have Tina's profile on Instagram, Tina Sosna, if you want to go and follow her. And down here, you can find the link to her preset shop. So if you're only interested in achieving her color grading, there's no better way than buying her presets and supporting her. She has several presets, several variations. So uh, the purpose of my tutorials isn't to steal all the presets. The purpose is just to use these profiles of famous people. She has 127,000 followers as an example to create the exercise and learn how to color grade. So if we take a broad look at her feed, you can notice that all of the photos are taken in the countryside in Germany, there's where she lives. But in particular, pay attention to the exposure. We're not gonna see any pure whites on her feed or any pure blacks. They're very controlled and dimmed down and very flat. Then we have a very desaturated palette with greens, which are basically almost gone. And we have a slight warm cast added to the entire image. Now here and there, she adds some black and white photography just to mix it up, but it's basically the same style, just reconverted into black and white. So today we're going to replicate three styles and don't worry, this video is not going to be too long. It's a very straightforward style and very and quite easy to replicate. So the first style that we're going to replicate is the one that I consider to be the base style of or more dominant style on her feet, which is this one. So here we have a beautiful picture of herself, her husband and her little kid. And you can notice the style in particular, pay attention to the exposure. It's very flat. The sun is impacting them from the side and you can barely notice any difference to the shadows, to the highlights. And this is telling me that she's bringing down the highlights and bringing up the shadows. So we have more information in those parts of the image. Um, the shadows uh, of the trees in the grass, we can see all the details. So she is bringing up the shadows. Now in all of her feet, you're not gonna find any pure whites or pure blacks. The blacks in this case are very faded out. She's bringing them up it's done in the tone curve or with the basic corrections so they're a bit gray so we have to keep that in mind now in terms of color it is a very desaturated feed but in particular there's a loss of saturation in blues aquas magentas and purples are basically gone but in particular the greens are very dominant because well she does live in the countryside so the greens are a bit warmer than usual that's done in hsl and also they're very desaturated this includes the yellows as well and the greens now in the skin tones you can pay attention to them and they're very natural so this is telling me that she's not moving anything in camera calibration the skin tones are natural as they are so it's a very straightforward edit mostly done in hsl then we have this little variant on her style which is basically the same preset but just has a little bit more contrast in particular pay attention how the sky has basically no blue and then the flowers that should be a bit blue towards the the purples are also very desaturated but this style just has a little bit more uh, contrast and the shadows lose a little, bit, a little bit more information so she's bringing down the shadows maybe in the tone curve maybe in the basic corrections so it's a bit more of a punchy style now now that we're here we can also pay attention to one thing that she adds in all of her images which is this very nice and organic film grain most of these images are shot with a canon 5d mark 4 so she's adding the grain in post edition to give it this organic and very nice texture to the images and then based on this contrasty style she has the black and white photography as you can see um, this preset is very punchy, very contrasty and dramatic. We lose some information in the dark parts of the image. Blacks are still faded out and the whites are very controlled, but also we have a bit more exposure. So it's a bit more of a contrasty and punchy look. The film grain is basically the same as in the previous styles. And as a result, we have a very nice black and white style for all types of photography, for documentary photography, for street photography, portraits. It's a very nice look. So guys, I think we have all the information that we need. We're gonna replicate these three presets today. But before we jump into Lightroom, as always, I'm gonna remind you that these three presets, I'm gonna add them to the Edit Like Preset Pack V2. Link up here if you wanna check it out. In that preset pack, you're gonna find all the presets that we've created in this series throughout this season. Also in that link, you can find my personal presets and nuts that I use every single day to edit my Instagram or my YouTube videos. So if you can support me in that way, I'd be very thankful and ensure I don't starve to death. Other than that guys, let's jump into Lightroom and start editing. Okay, creators, once in Lightroom, I have this little collection set up. Most of these images contain a lot of green that will help us to create this preset. And a lot of them are in moody days, 
but some, like this one, we have bright sunny days to see how the preset performs in different lighting scenarios. So I'm just gonna select any image right here, maybe uh, this one, and with D on your keyboard, you're gonna move to the develop tab. Now, first of all, we're gonna start off creating the most dominant style on her feet, and then from that one, we're gonna create the contrast variant, and from that one, we're gonna create the black and white. So for this first preset, what we want to achieve is that desaturation on the greens and the blues, but also have that flatter exposure by reducing highlights and bringing up shadows. So we're gonna start off with that, the exposure and contrast, and then we're gonna move down to the color grade. Now for exposure and contrast, I like to use the basic corrections over here, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks, in combination with the tone curve. Now, I don't like to use exposure and contrast, nor tint and temperature for that matter, because these first four values, I like to exclude them from the preset, preset leave them at zero. So these are the values that we're gonna use to compensate if the image maybe was poorly shot on field. If the white balance was wrong, then we compensate with temperature and tint. If the exposure was maybe underexposed, then we compensate with exposure and contrast. So we're gonna skip those and start off with highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. So first of all, highlights, we want to bring them towards the negatives. If we go towards the positives, you can see how we lose more information in the bright parts of the image and we achieve more contrast. We don't want to do that. We want to go towards the negatives to have more detail in the bright parts of the image. So maybe around the minus 50 is gonna be enough. Then the shadows, we want to do the opposite. We want to work towards the positives so we have more detail in the dark parts of the image. Around the plus 66 is gonna be my value. Then whites, I'm just gonna skip them. Whites will control the brightest parts on our image. And then the blacks control the darkest parts on our image. I am gonna move the blacks though, because right here by raising the shadow so much, we're losing a bit of contrast. So I'm just gonna reduce the blacks just a bit. A little minus 16, 15 is gonna be just enough. Next, we're gonna move down to the tone curve. Now the tone curve is a very powerful tool. It allows us to correct our image, to create specific exposure and contrasty looks, but also it allows us to color grade with the RGB channels. Now, in this video, I'm not gonna cover the tone curve in detail. I already did a specific tutorial about this tool. I'll link it up here. And as you can see in this video, I'm not gonna go too into detail into any tool. So if you want an in-depth tutorial about HSL, about color grading, about camera calibration, I already made tutorials about those. So when we go through that tool in the editing process, a little video is gonna pop up over here with the respective video. First of all, I want to lower a bit of the highlights and the whites. This point will control the brightest part on the image. Just gonna move it vertically towards the negatives. So something around these values. So right here, what I'm doing is bringing down the whites, the brightest parts on our image, ensure we don't have any clipping or anything like that, reducing the highlights and also reducing a bit of the midtones so we have a dimmer environment. Now, as you can see, uh, down here we have input, which is the X axis coordinates for this point, and then output is the vertical axis. So we just moved the vertical axis to 224. So you can introduce these values with your keyboard if you're unsure where to place each point. Next, I want to create a point in the shadows right here because we have a strange transition between the midtones and the shadows right here. I want to uh, even it out just a bit. Just gonna pull this point above the diagonal just a bit, just around these values, and it's gonna be 32, the input and output 34. And then finally, I'm gonna fade out those blacks. Remember that the blacks on her feet, well, they weren't pure blacks, they were more around the grayish tones. So this point at the bottom corner is gonna help us to create that. So I'm just gonna put it up above the diagonal in the Y axis, maybe around the plus 13, and immediately you can notice how the blacks are more grayed out. This is before and this is after. And this is basically our exposure and contrast done. We have a flatter exposure with less difference between the bright parts and the shadows and we have more detail in the dark parts of the image with those faded out blacks. So that's it for exposure and contrast. Now we're gonna move down to the color grading. Now for color grading, this edit is gonna be very straightforward. We're not gonna use camera calibration. We're not gonna use any of the advanced tools. Instead, we're just gonna start off with the color mixer, which is a, a new version of HSL. So color mixer over here, as you can see, it's now divided between mixer, which is basically HSL and point color. We're gonna use mixer, and first of all, we're gonna start off with the hue. Now, right here, what we want to do is just alter the greens and the yellows towards the warmer tones. As we saw in Tina's feed, most of the vegetation was very dimmed down and desaturated, but also tending towards the warmer tones. So the greens will control, well, the darker parts of the greens. But as you can see, if I move the yellow slider as well, we're also affecting the greens because, well, basically yellow contains a lot of greens. So we're gonna go towards the negatives with both of them. Yellow's around the minus 46, and then the greens just gonna go ham 
or the minus 75 something around those lines now it's looking horrible i know it's looking very yellow in the background but no worries because we are going to desaturate and dim down those greens in the saturation tab over here now in saturation we want to reduce the saturation of basically all the cool tones remember that purples and magentas well they're basically non-existent on her feet so i'm going to move them towards the minus 100 if you guys have maybe a subject wearing magentas and you want to bring them back you can always just move the slider up in this case it's going to be by default in minus 100 then the blues and the aquas were very desaturated so i'm going to go maybe around the minus 50 not completely desaturated otherwise that would be completely unnatural but something around these lines and we're basically in this video in, in this image we don't have a lot of blues but right here we can see the difference uh, have some aquas and some blues in the mountains now they're a bit more dim and then the greens again a minus 40 i think is going to be enough and also the yellows and now it's looking quite nice but we are still missing some desaturation some general desaturation of the entire image so i'm just going to go up to the presence tab and saturation it's going to go towards the negatives around the minus 25. So the image is looking very desaturated and very dull, but don't worry, we're still going to add some color in the color grading department. In essence, what we did is just take away some colors and then we can add a new color to filling the void. So we're going to move down to color grading. Again, the tutorial about color grading is going to be appearing up here. And here we can basically add a color to the shadows, to the midtones, or to the highlights, or basically just add a color to the entire image, which is what we're going to do. We're going to move down all the way to the global color wheel over here. And here we can basically paint our entire image with some tint and some saturation. So I'm going to go with a reddish tone. Maybe the hue is going to be 30 and of course the saturation is way too high. So I'm just going to reduce the saturation just around those values. So right here the image is looking quite nice. It has this very nice warm cast, very sepia and retro. We can deactivate color grading to see what it does. This is before. It's a bit more cool. And now everything is a bit subtly more warm. Now, one thing that is missing in this preset is the grain. Remember that she had very nice and organic film grain. So we're gonna move down to the effects over here. And first of all, we have to move the slider of amount to apply some grain. And right here, I do advise you guys to leave it a bit more conservative because if you go towards the plus 50s, plus 80s, you can see how it's very distractive, uh, distracting and it reduces the sharpness of your image. So I like to leave it around the 20 to 35% in the amount. So in this case, maybe 25 is going to be enough. And then what we are going to move is the size. The size will determine the size of the little particle. So of course, we're going to move way high maybe a plus 80 is gonna, just gonna give this very nice texture and it's looking perfect now you may be wondering then when does roughness come in now roughness what it does is create more difference between the darker and the lighter dots as you can see grain right here is composed between white and black dots if we move up the roughness you can see how there's more contrast more difference between these two points if we move towards the negatives there's basically little difference so i'm just going to reset it to the minus 50 it's just going to be enough uh, just leave it like that Okay, so this is the before and after of our preset. We have more dynamic range, a flatter exposure. We have those faded out blacks, a nice film grain and the desaturation on the cool tones. I'm gonna save it and see how it performs in other images uh, because it's very important to apply the preset to different scenarios to see if it works. It could be the case that the preset only works in this image. So I don't wanna take risks. So let's apply it to a couple more images to see if we did a good job or if we need to modify it. So to save a preset, I'm gonna go to the left panel over here. Under presets, hit the plus sign, create preset. And of course you want to name it. And remember exposure, white balance and contrast, we want to unmark them and not include them in the preset, just like detail, lens corrections or transform. And in this case, calibration and high dynamic range is not gonna be uh, included. So once we create it, let's move to another image. Okay, so we have this portrait over here. Let's apply the preset and it's looking fantastic over here it's looking very nice you can see how there's a lot more information in the bright parts of the image compared to the original we have more detail also in the shadows and uh, those greens are desaturated but not completely gone and towards the warmer tones in general it's looking very nice now for this image in particular you could use the exposure and contrast to compensate for example uh, the original image as you can see is very bright and very uh, a lot of contrast so maybe i would reduce the contrast over here as you can see these values are at zero and then reduce a bit of the exposure and there we have it now it's looking fantastic a beautiful image how about in a bright sunny day let's see how it performs over here let's apply tina sosa and right here looks beautiful perfect preset over here for bright sunny day 
we have more information in the brightness of the image, in the shadows, the saturation on those greens, and it's looking perfect for this type of image. Fantastic. Okay, so that's the first preset. Now we're gonna create the contrasty version and don't worry, we're not gonna start from scratch. We're just gonna use the same preset as a base. So right here we have the Tina Sosna applied to this image. And what I'm gonna do is just alter the contrast in the tone curve. First of all, we want to have brighter uh, whites and brighter highlights. So I'm just gonna move this point in the tone curve, the one that controls the bright parts of the image back to the corner. Immediately you can notice how we have more exposure and more contrast. And then the shadows over here, I'm just gonna return them just a bit down below the diagonal. The value is gonna be 36 and 28. Immediately you can notice how it's a lot more punchy and contrasty. But one thing that I don't like is how the midtones are darkening too much. So what I'm gonna do is create a point over here in the midtones, just drag it into the diagonal. Just around these values, it's gonna be 164 the input and the output 159. And there we have a very punchy image. Now, another thing that I'm gonna do is reset the color grading over here. We don't want the warm tones for this punchy look. It's a bit more moody. Just gonna reset it so we have a colder image. Now, in this case, this image again was overexposed. Just reduce the exposure just a bit, but it's looking fantastic. So let's save the preset and see how it performs in a couple of other images. So how about over here in this image that I shot uh, when I was doing the 1924 US preset. So let's apply first of all, uh, Tina Sosna over here, the first one, it's looking fantastic. We can see that the saturation and that lowering of the highlights. And then we have the contrasty version over here, which just looks fantastic. Just adds a bit more punch into the image. How about in this one? First of all, Tina Sosna looks beautiful in this image. Notice how the greens are basically gone. We have a flatter exposure with little difference between the shadows and the highlights. So that's what we were looking for. And now Tina Sosna contrasty just adds a bit more punch into the image. I think it works quite well. Now let's create the black and white version. And this is going to be the simplest of presets ever created. What we're going to do is just select V on your keyboard, just a single click. And there we have it. We have the black and white version with the contrasty style. As you can see, our palettes have been changed into black and white. And right here, you can see how uh, the tools that control color grading are basically nullified like vibrance and saturation. Then we have a black and white instead of color mixer and we can only change the luminance of certain colors. And with a single click, we've just created the black and white version of the contrasty preset. So again, we can save it. And briefly, let's see how it performs in other images. So back over here, we have the contrasty version. Now let's apply the black and white and it looks fantastic in this image. Very punchy, very dramatic with the contrast that we added and also the grain is looking beautiful. How about over here, this image of my dog Emmet as well. This is very underexposed, so raise up the exposure. We have Tina Sosna, the first one, it looks fantastic, this beautiful preset. Then we have contrasty version, also very moody. And then we have black and white, and it looks just beautiful. This preset is just fantastic, but the film grain really adds to character. Finally, if we revert to our original image, here we have Tina Sosna, the first one. Then we have contrasty version, a lot more punchy and moody. And lastly, we have the black and white, which is very dramatic in this image. So there you have it, guys. So there you have it, guys. This is how I would achieve a color grading similar to Tina Sosna. Now, I'm not saying that she does it in this manner. Maybe she has different techniques, but this is the most straightforward and simplest way that I could think of to achieve a similar color grading. Now, it was quite interesting that this edit was pretty straightforward and simple. Just a little lesson that you don't always have to move all the sliders and have a heavy edit to achieve a nice color grading. Now, remember that these three presets are in the Edelac Preset Pack V2. Link up here if you want to support me. Also, you can find the Edelac V1 with the previous uh, season that we did in the Edelac series. So, if you want to check them out, I'll be very thankful. If not, just like the video, subscribe, all those things. I'm Tony Fuentes. Cheers to all of you, and I'll see you in the next one.